the stand uh, today at the Commission of Inquiry hearing into the PIC. Machila has been accused of misuse of funds and careless investment decisions at the PIC. He has since denied those allegations. Machila told the inquiry that he was appointed chief investment officer by his longtime friend Brian Mulife. He said he was not interviewed for the position nor was the position advertised. Machila resigned in November last year amid allegations of corruption and nepotism. He's also been implicated in the testimony of numerous witnesses. The PIC manages the pension funds on behalf of public sector employees. Meanwhile, Machila also says that he does not see a problem with having representatives of Labour appointed to the board of the PIC. He says that these appointments should, however, follow the correct appointment procedures and requirements. This mandate process... Would it have some points where, you know, there was Kosatu who came here and there was a group called AMAGP and they complained that they, when there were problems at the PIC, they couldn't, uh, you know, like ask the PIC questions. They wanted to know what was happening at the PIC, but as stakeholders, they didn't have any power to act, you know. Would a mandate have solved this kind of problem? We, 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 if, if you look at the Board of Trustees of the GPF, the way it's constituted, my understanding is that it's 50% labor for the unions, and another 50% is from the employer. That's the representation on the board. And so the unions will get their voice through this representation on the board. Very little to do with the PIC because the board of the of trustees are the ones who craft the investment mandate mm -hmm. with parameters mm -hmm. and pass it on to the PIC to implement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it will be difficult for a union outside this process to say to the PIC, you can't do that, you can't do that, when is well within the mandate that the client has given to us. So let's say the PIC is almost burning or it's collapsing, you know. How would maybe the GPF and say stakeholders like COSA to have any power to influence it or is there something that can be done or that is the forte of the Minister of Finance? The, 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 the first, the very first, you know, Port of call would be the regulator. Because we are regulated, we have to perform their function, our function, or the PIC case to perform in line with FIRES Act. And FIRES Act is there to protect the clients, the owners of the asset. So if they have a problem, they should run to the FSB and complain, and the FSB will take necessary steps to intervene. The Board of Trustees of the GPF, we present to them on a regular basis. They have an investment committee. In fact, all the clients, they have investment committee where the PIC would present the performance, uh, account for any issue that, must be, that may be on the table on a regular basis. And there's also interaction, continuous interaction between executive management of the PIC and executive management of the clients. I had interacted with commissioners of the UIF, compensation fund, the principal officer, executive officer of the GPF, and so on. So there has been that continuous engagement on various matters with the clients. The